Welcome back to the Morning Bright Focus Show. I am excited to be having Mr. Talent on set. He's called Peter Chege, but you can refer to him as Mr. Talent. And he's going to tell us why he refers to himself as Mr. Talent. But Peter Chege is from Am Unique Generation Africa. It is um, a society, rather. Yeah. an association and under this we get to learn so much more and he's going to tell us about our unique generation and as you can see his t-shirt it's already been branded um yeah awesome so karibu sana mr talent thank you very much thank you so much for coming to yeah. meet people before christmas yeah <laughs> i know there are some people out there who are not feeling christmasy no, they're just saying like Christmas is coming, and I, I don't even have plans. You know, you know the, how the sometimes Christmas can find you um, discouraged. Yeah. You feel discouraged, and you feel like this was the, probably your year for doing something, and it didn't happen. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so we are here to motivate those people. Yeah. Yes. So you can tell me a bit about yourself, and then we can go to our unique generation. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Peter Chege, aka Mr. Talent. Mm -hmm. Is, uh, is defined in four words. Wow, okay. Number one, he's a thinker. He's a life coach. He believes in people. And then he's a trained counselor. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wait, you went to school to do counseling? Yes, I went to school to do counseling, but I had a gift. I had a gift of uh, talking to people, helping people discover themselves. Oh, yeah. But then I felt I need the counseling skills, I need yeah. to be trained. Exactly, yeah. so true. Mm -hmm. So did you go for counseling after you got the, the, the conviction? Uh, I, I, I have been doing this for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I discovered I was a speaker when I was in class six. Wow, were you like a prefect? I was a prefect, I was <laughs> erected prefect in class five. Okay. Then in class six, a guy came to speak to the school okay. and within me I felt I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Then I went back home. Uh, unlike other, other age mates who were bought uh, Crocodile and uh, the stories and all that, my dad bought me Dr. Miles' inspirational books, The wow. Pursuit of Purpose. Really? Yes. And from that time, I, I, I made a culture of reading at least one book for two weeks. Um, and the book must be more than 200 pages, wow. not less than that. Wow. Really? And have you really been keeping to that? Yes. In fact, right now I've reduced to one week. Every week I must do a book. Wow. Is this why you call yourself a thinker? Yes, I'm a thinker. What does it mean to call yourself a thinker? I, I'm a thinker because I, I always look into aspects, all aspects that come along my way. Okay. I, I ask my, myself, Two, few, two questions. Number one, why did I get the opportunity to see this? Right. Then what can I do? Okay. Then what can I do? Now composes it into me now thinking through what I can do as an individual and then studying what others have done in the past. Wow. Like for example, uh, four weeks ago I went to Mombasa. Okay. Mboboruru. And I wanted to reach out to Mateja, the drug addicts. Okay. And I only had one connection. I, I knew someone in Mombasa. I told this person, help me get into a base, Mahali Penyuanaishi, but I to a base. And then connect me with only one addict. And I went to Mombasa. And um, I didn't know how to, 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 to really deal with him. Because I've dealt with uh, other addicts, but uh, in a very conventional way. All right, okay. So I went to, to the coast and uh, sat down with addicts. And first day, 20 of them came. Second day, I had 60. Wow. What? And then... What were you telling them on the first uh, uh, day? In fact, the work <laughs> of a life coach is not to, to tell people what to do. Right. The, work, the work of a life coach is to help people access the ability to change from within. Wow. So I was just speaking to them about their abilities, their okay. talents, right. why they were born. Mm. And these guys were telling me, no, 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 you're speaking about us. And you see, they are, they are, they are high, they are, they are on weed, they are in unga. They are addicted. They are addicted. And they are telling me, Baba, umekuja hapa wana, watunenea sisi. I was so happy. And then uh, let me now tell you something. Now. Why I call myself a thinker? Okay. When I went to the coast, mm -hmm. I, I, I just thought, 
what is it that these guys use? And so someone told me, biscuits. So I bought biscuits and gave them. These guys were seeing me like a prophet. You've come with biscuits, you're giving us food. Una Oh, they love biscuits? Yeah, they love biscuits. Okay. Uh, someone who is in deep addiction. Uh, it's sweet sweet things. Oh, like sweets, yeah. yes. candy. Yes. And then out of that, forty-five. Wow. Forty-five. They are. They have gotten into the government project program methadol. They want to move out of drugs. Wow. Forty-five out of sixty. That's that one wow. makes me so happy. Wow. Yeah. So, like, with something that you do like that, mm -hmm. do you go back and follow up with the forty-five? Yes, I go back and follow up, uh, and then within the crowd, I, I train passionate people who live there. So okay, I have like okay, two. Okay. I have like two. I have Kezia. I have Mike. Okay. Okay. So they're doing the follow-ups, and then on a monthly basis, I go to Mombasa, and I do the follow-up and reach for more. Okay. Yes. Oh my goodness! Before I start asking about so many other groups that you've done, let's talk about your how you started this whole thing. Um, you said you started in 18 years ago? Yeah, 18 years yes. ago. Let's go back 18 years ago. Now, this is what happened. I, I went to a certain church. And in this church, there were no young people. What? How can there not be any young people? Only one who was not young. Uh, she was around 11 years. So oh. that is what they were calling the youth. <laughs> and so I sat there and asked myself, why is it that other young people are not coming to church? Right. And so I, I moved out and started speaking to people about hope. Not even about Christ, but about hope. Right. Told them, you're born for a purpose, you're born for a cause. You, you guys are great. And we need to come together and do something. And then immediately these guys started coming to church. church wow. And then when they came to church, within two weeks, we had 20 young people in church. Wow. And not only coming to church for hope, but coming to church and they were born again. Oh my goodness. Did they like receive Christ when they came to church? They, they came to church looking for hope because I spoke right. to them about hope. Okay, okay. I went there and spoke to them about hope. I, okay. I, 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 usually, I usually use the book of Esther that okay. doesn't mention the name God. Right. It doesn't. Yes, it, it doesn't. doesn't. To show us that God is the unseen force that can work through human beings to bring hope and to bring a great future for, for the young people. So I spoke to them and they came to church and received Christ. Mm -hmm. and then out of that, I, I realized I have an ability within. And so I, I went into my four keywords. The four keywords are dif discover. So discover yourself. Because when you discover, you recover. It, the moment you discover you are a musician, then you recover what you want to do in your generation. Okay. Once you discover, you define. So I gave it a definition. I have a passion for young people. Okay. And then I created a space that on a daily basis I'll be thinking about young people. I'll be praying about young people. Wow. And I'll be reaching to at least three young people. And three now started growing. Every day you'd reach out to at least three? At least three. And then I also now uh, made it a purpose. Made it a thing to impact my generation. Wow. Yes. All right. When you're talking about young people, what? Who is young people? What age group? Uh, young people. I define them in two two ways. Okay. Someone who is productive. Okay. He's young. He has the energy. Okay. But then we have the the, the numbers. In in Kenya, we talk of thirty four and below. Right. But but personally, I've gone to to between eleven and eighteen. Mm -hmm. Because that is the, the laboratory age. That uh, that's the age that guys want to discover. Mm -hmm. They want to experiment. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, every young people listening to me today, you are not an experiment. You are an assignment. Wow. And you need to discover your assignment. And this is the discovery age. Even Jesus Christ, one of the greatest uh, prophets uh, of the Bible, discovered that he was someone at twelve. And he led his script. So this is the age that uh, parents, teachers, trainers, and us life coaches, we need to come up with a system that helps people discover. So between age 11 
to 18, wow. the okay. discovery age. Right, so you've talked about a system that people discover, and when I was reading your profile, yeah. you talked about unconventional ways which you use yes. to help people. Yes. Please talk to me about those. I was waiting to ask you that question. Unconventional <laughs> ways. Um, unconventional ways. You, you see, when we go to school, uh, we, we, we are put into some systems. Right, it's very true. And, and some of these systems is like, uh, like for example, you told, for you to, for you to, see, to see a client, you, you must not be friends. You must not be relating at a, at a close friendship level because of dual, dual relationships. Okay. But then the unconventional is, is whereby now you reach out to the people you want to touch where they are. And then you create an environment that gives them the power within them to understand that this is a problem that I'm going through. And then turn that mess into a message. That is the unconventional way. Oh, wow. okay. For example, some guys in school want to ban the school. Yes. The way it happens in second term in this country. Second so, term? Yes, yeah, second, second term. term. Yeah, yeah. It usually happens. I, I think it's because of cold and mock. People fear mock. Oh. And okay, uh, okay. that was not happening in our days. Even if it was happening, it was... Very uh, more. It was contained. Mm. Uh, and uh, now the unconventional, it's going now to the school and uh, looking at Yure Manga, uh, the, the macho guy, that guy who speaks and every <laughs> other person <laughs> is shaking. And then becoming a friend, changing that person. Once you change that person, you scatter every other person. Have you been able to do that? Yeah, but I'll not mention because of uh, confidentiality. No, like... Uh, I, I went to a school. Huh? All right. The school had a lot of uh, uh, marijuana smoking. And uh, they had tried to chase these guys out of the school. And so I went to the school. I told them, uh, they told me to speak about drugs and substance abuse. I said, no, 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 I'm not going to speak about drugs and substance abuse. I spoke to them about discover your dream. Okay. So I, I did it so well. Uh, so one of these guys who is the macho guy wanted to discover a dream before every other person. Wow. And so he came to me and told me, no, 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 I want to discover my dream. I want these other guys to be great. And, um, <laughs> Did he really say that? Uh, yes. And then we went, Kando. I told her, it was a her, it was not even a he. It was a her. Wow. And she was managed. She had a lot of money. Okay. She came All from right. a very well rich family. family. So uh, I sat down with her and uh, I told her, why do you want to discover your dream? Because I want to be great. So what are some of the things that makes you not to, not, not to, read, to attain your greatness? And she said, mm, peer pressure, um, uh, drugs and substance abuse. But uh, let me hope you are not a snitch. So she, uh, she told me, let me hope you are not a snitch. Uh, a snitch is someone when you attend a set over. Mm. I told her, no, 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 we are friends. I can't do this. But then we talked, we became friends. Then after becoming friends, uh, the girl told me, but I want to change out of that. And for me, that one was an open heaven. Wow. So she started changing, wow. changing, 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 changing. In three weeks, she had uh, stopped doing a lot of weed. Uh, you know, we use systematic desensitization. Whereby if you're doing three, you go to two, that is a success. You go to Come one, on. success. Half, then you, leave. then you leave. And then in a month's time, she was done. Wow. Now, what happened? She used to be the supplier. <laughs> she, she used to be the sponsor. And so oh, it is no. stopped. That's unconventional. Wow. Yes. It is. It truly is. You know, um, in a school institution, they would suspend this person yes. or, or even, you know, tell them to go completely, not to come back to school. Yeah. But that's not solving the problem. No. So you go to the ground and solve the problem from the ground. Yes. All right. So it's been a whole 18 years. Yes. And you've been reading a book every one, one week? Yes. How many books have you read? <laughs> <laughs> you can't even count. I can't even count. Uh, like, like right now, I'm, I'm reading Chicken Soup by ah. Dale Carnegie. Okay. I, I, lo I love reading uh, books written by the ancient writers. They had a lot of wealth. A lot of wealth. Mm -hmm. uh, these, these guys didn't 
read other books so that they may write from those other books. They you know from, from their conviction. own conviction. Is mostly what you want people to do, especially the young people. Get their own conviction. Is yes. that what you always inspire them to do? Yes, I, I want every person to discover who they are and then walk in that thing. Because I, you remember what I said before when I was starting. When you discover, you recover. If you're suffering from masturbation, suffering from drugs, suffering from uh, lack of self-esteem, you need to discover the one thing. It is known as the priori priority or uh, the principle of the one thing. You discover that one thing that you can do with ease. That one thing that you can do without even sweating. Mm -hmm. That one thing that you can do even while sleeping. Is it acting? Is it singing? And uh, is, it speaking? is it speaking like me? Is right. it coaching people? Is it exactly. being, being an interviewer like you? Exactly. Yes. Right. And once you discover that, then you can recover whatever you want. Wow. But there's something I want also to say. Let us not overrate the issue of grades. Like in this country, I always receive a lot of calls when exams are out, whether KCP or KCSE. Guys want to kill themselves because they didn't achieve what they, had wanted. What they wanted. What about this young boy, 257, from Miro Secondary School? Miro is just next to Jombe High School where I schooled. Miro, Miro was not even there when I was in high school. Huh? Uh, it's a day school. This guy comes from a very bad, ba, ba, humble background. But when he scored 257, he discovered that he had more energy to do more things. Yeah. And KCSE 2018, A minus. While someone had 415, went to a national school, uh, became contented, I'm in a national school, didn't they discover what they had, sure. they slept, and then scored Daudi Ongeza. That is a D plus. As we used to say, we're from Guaduka. We're from Guaduka. I know, I know. All right. So with a um, unique generation, yes. I know over the years you've had so many programs that have run through. Let's just talk about some of the programs. Uh, some of the programs that uh, we do, we, we do a lot of training and mentorship. Like I believe if I mentor so many people, then the dream I have, because my dream is to reach out to 7 million young people. How many before, million before, have you be reached? Before I die. Okay, I've only done 100,000. I was doing a, pro a pilot project. 100,000 by my own. What if I mentored other people who can do more than I can right, do? Right. Then we can do 7 million. That's very true. So I, I, I'm reaching out to guys in the universities, in colleges, and in high schools, and also primary schools, mentoring them and pouring out what I have into them so that they may do the same to others. Mm -hmm. If we can have people who are awakening guys in villages, mm -hmm. telling them it is possible, you can become a musician, you can become a dancer, you can become a scientist. If you can have so many people full of hope and giving that hope to others, then it means my dream will be achieved. So some of the programs that we do are training young children, parenting program, changing the way the parent views the 21st century child. Okay, but how do you do that parenting one? Do you go looking for the parents? How does it, How do you do that one, that one particular one? The, the parenting programs, we don't go looking for parents. Uh, but churches invite us. We also do seminars, mm -hmm. like I do monthly seminars okay. in Nairobi and in Nakuru. All right. Uh, reaching out to parents. They come, we train them. And the, the essence of training is not that uh, you may raise your children well, but it also to go and train another parent. So it is rich one, rich the other. Okay, yeah. okay. So you're trying to change that perspective on the 21st century child. Yes. How is that going? It is awesome because, <laughs> number one thing, <laughs> it's awesome because uh, nothing has changed. Okay. We only add to what was there. Like when people talk about tablets, eh? Uh, tabs. Uh, Moses had two written by the heart of God. Yet we may talk China. When we talk about um, fonts, fonts. No, no, no. Don't talk about fonts. <laughs> okay. Let, let's talk about the hair. All right. Like uh, I see women in blue, green, red, and all that. Uh, our our parents 
used to use clay, soil, mm. on a jipak. Hot pants, 1970, 1974, hot pants. Yeah. Twist, the, the dancing style, twisty. Theirs was a bit slow, mambo mdogo mdogo, like. ours is faster. faster. So nothing has changed. So I'm trying to show them it's only our drifting out of what we are supposed to do that makes these children go astray. Okay. And so I'm making them to participate in the raising of the child. Mm -hmm. Because there is no way a parent will cry that shule uh, imefungwa, watoto wakuja nyumbani, watakuja kula, na mwalimu anaka nao three, three, ma three months. Na yeye, siyo mwenye mzazi. Mzazi anatakuwa kuwa na time na wa, watoto wake. And so I'm trying to cr trigger this that don't spend money on children, spend time on your ch with your children. Okay. Yes. I do know that uh, with, with this generation, it's, it's really hard to have your parents over all the time. And when you see them, it's in the morning when they're leaving, and in the evening when they come and they're tired, they want to sleep. You know, so they don't have time to interact with their parents to spend more time with the children because they're working. I'm not talking of quantity. Right. I'm talking of quality. Wow. The five minutes you spend with your mom, with your dad, or with your children, what is it that you added to them? What value? Okay. Like I, rem I, remember, I remember when I went to high school and my parents were in, uh, in Left Valley. And then my dad used to work with KDF. Anytime I tried to smoke, I could f hear the voice of my, <laughs> my mom. <laughs> what did your mom used to tell you? My mom told me, uh, life is about you. Okay. Life is about the decisions that you make. Okay. And then my dad could always tell me, you know, when you make great decisions, then your future will be great. Mm. And then the courage even to start a life coaching, uh, life coaching organization in Africa, when I didn't even know even a single life coach in Africa, uh, it was a daring move. It was very true. And why I did this is because my dad taught me a, a concept that I will never forget. And I have also taught it, uh, I'm teaching it to others. That when you knock the door, don't just stop there. Dare to, to turn the rock. And when you turn the rock, if the door is open, get in and say hi with a smile. And that's what my dad taught me. And I have done this. I go, to, I go to churches that I don't even know anyone. Really? Yes, and I tell them I'm a life coach. I do. I speak to young people. I speak to children. I speak to fathers. And they tell me, can we give you an opportunity? Yes. They give me an opportunity. I go and grow it up. Wow. Then I get clients out of that. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yes. So the avenues that you use is mostly churches. That's churches, schools. That's colleges, cool. universities, right. and also youths in the community. Mm -hmm. I, I bump into youth baraza, in to, to chief barada, barazas, speak to the community. <laughs> All right, so we, we were talking about the programs. We've finished the parenting, you said two. Yes, mm -hmm. parenting, then children. Uh, I realized that um, between uh, zero, zero and seven years, that's the formative stage. It's a stage that we set the thinking, the way a child thinks. Mm -hmm. And in fact, a, a certain Catholic bishop said that uh, if you give me your child at two days, I can give you a Catholic bishop forever in six years. That's the formative stage. That's the stage you form within this person. The way you talk to them, because even, even before birth, a child listens, that soul listens. So when you're speaking to them bad things, when you're speaking to them oh. negative things, and when they are born and you speak negative things, they do perceive. You, do they really? They listen conceive before they are born. Yes. Really. Yes. That's why. That's why children are born uh, uh, fighting, crying all over because you used to quarrel with the husband oh. and all that. Oh, no. Yes. Okay. Yes. We don't show love. When you show love, they they they, they feel it. Okay. And so even when they are born, they can feel ah, this is my dad. And uh, when the dad gets hold of them and they'll feel, oh my, this is where I need to rest. Okay. And so we saw negative, a lot of commotions and all that before the born. And so this is the program I started, to train the children on their 
space. What is their space? Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. I've never heard that concept before. What is their space? Okay. So develop their consciousness. Give them an envisioned future at that age. So when they, they get into teenagers, teenage, in teenage we train people who can be models to others. And we lay in them the power to make decisions. Uh, not because friends are doing it. Not because wazazi wa mekuambia. I understand that. If you're going to church, you're going to church because you have decided, I'm going to church. So if you're, you're training that zero to seven? Zero to seven. To get that conviction. Yes, to get that. That's, then that's amazing. Then seven to sixteen, we train them on how to manage themselves. Not because your parent is there. How can I manage myself to get into that future? And so we, we broaden the vision. We envision the future. And then we help them to take the, uh, the action. Yes. Wow. Wow. That's, that's beautiful. I didn't know that there's something called your space when you're a child. There Learning is. Learning about your space. There is. Uh, let me tell you an example. Right. I, I trained. It was this year. Earlier this year, I, I trained... Uh, a program on children protection. Okay. So I was speaking to these young children. The young children told me something that I had never heard about Usiniguze hapa. Usiniguze hapa. Usiniguze hapa. He's only sehemu za si. It's a siri. And then I asked them, why is it that you're talking about that? Because watu wakubwa wanafanyaga hivo. So what is your space? When the child understands Mahali ambapo hataki kuguzwa, then they can easily report. When they see it, they can protect, they can report it. And they can protect themselves before they even report. Or they can cry out. So how to dangani wana sweetie? Di waguzo. So that is how to create their space. That's beautiful. Yes. That's beautiful. So that is the third program that you're doing. Yes, that's Let's talk it. about another, another program, the fourth one. Uh, another program that we also do is um, reaching out to high schools and... Uh, and colleges, and in high schools and colleges, we we help them understand why they are in school. Are you in school to just get a grade? <laughs> yes. Because if you're in school <laughs> to just get a grade, right. um, uh, then four years down the line, you still be struggling to become what you are born to become. So you're in school to get a broader perspective, to to get a broader view of how you perceive things so that you may also make it to your dream. You, you're not in high school just to pass time. You're there to, to make it to your dream. So you're broadening the perception. So that is a program that we do. It is a, is more of a thinking program. Oh, right. Because as a man or a woman think it, so is there. It's true. Yes. So before we go on break, how do you develop the, the youths to, to, to broaden their thinking? Is there like a particular program or um, what's it called? You know how you get like tests to do? Do you do those? Yes, we, we do a lot of, we are an organization that uh, is based on research. So we first of all do a lot of research. Like if we, go, if we come to Thika, we're going to do research on the issues affecting the young people in Thika. Okay. Because mm -hmm. the issues affecting young people in Mombasa are not the same as the ones affecting young people in okay. Thika. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we shouldn't be thinking that the world is frat because of the globalization and the internet yeah. and all that mm -hmm. and then assume that uh, the issues are the same they are not the same so we number one do that research okay. once we do that research backed with that research then we do a facilitatory mode our trainings are facilitatory we don't come there as a teacher as, as a, a high school teacher so we do 40 percent and then they do 60. so we treat problems that are coming from them even when we are training, we don't just train, like, like I'm training about drugs and then, you know, how many types of drugs do you know? Cocaine, <laughs> heroin, no, 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 I let them come out with the drugs. Right, okay. Okay, and Mombasa, Bangi, when I bomb. So when you ca go there speaking about Bangi, mm. so you let them bring out, so that's how we develop the young people. We let them bring out the issues. And then we create an environment for them to solve their problems because they have the power to solve their problems. Wow. And it is until they discover that they have a problem 
that they are going to recover and start changing. Mm -hmm. So uh, we only do 40%. Okay. We create a shell. <laughs> All right, so we want to go on a really short break. But before we go on a short break, you are called Mr. Talent. Yes. Why is that? Why Mr. Talent? <laughs> because I, in fact, in fact, this is what happened. Uh, Mr. Talent came out of um, uh, people who believed that I was so concerned about why people were born. Discovering their inner abilities, discovering their personal development models, models and uh, actions and talent and so they started calling me talent wow but i added they mister who? yeah who is they Everyone? the young people the young people they started call calling talent. me talent talanta talanta and then i added mister all right so you normally introduce yourself as mr talent yes mr okay. talent okay when I, I heard that name i thought maybe you have like an extraordinary talent but of course speaking to people is a talent no it's uh, extraordinary in fact even discovering t people's talents is uh is extraordinary. It is. Yes. But uh, a talented beyond. person. Yes. But a talented person is a person who who does ordinary things in an extraordinary way. Wow. Yes. Like speaking to people. Like speaking to Motivating people. people. Yes. Remember we are here today to motivate you. Today is motivation Monday. I hope you're feeling motivated. Um I'm here with Mr. Talent. But we're going on a really sharp break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Morning Bright Focus Show with me, Victoria Chabet. I'm so excited to be having you here viewing us <laughs> on Christmas Eve. I'm so excited. It's Motivation Monday. We are here with Peter Talent and he's motivating us about so many things and um, changing the way we think about problems and becoming our own problem solvers. All right. So before that, let's go to the Focus Journalism School. We have intake ongoing. We have 30% discount from all enrollments that we'll be having you from now till January 15th. We have diploma and certificate courses available. Some of the courses that we have is film production, journalism and mass communication, video editing, sound engineering, motion graphics, DJing, digital marketing, graphic design, computer packages. If you want to enroll with that or you want more details, please call us on 0790-229938, 0790-229938. Okay, so uh, before we went on break, we were talking to Peter Talent. And please join the conversation through our social media handles, Facebook, Focus TV Kenya, Instagram, Focus TV underscore Kenya, and Twitter at Focus TV Kenya. Before we went on break, we were talking about why he's called Talent. And he'll just recap that story and then we can go on. You said you were called talent because everyone just used to call you talent. Yeah, they call me talent. But uh, <laughs> one of the one of the greatest thing that was within me is uh, helping them discover why they were born, discovering that big idea about yourself, discovering your talent, your abilities, your passions. What is it that you love doing? What is it that you feel pain when you see it being done the way you don't like it? Okay. So that's why they call me talent. And who helped you? get you a talent or rather what you were born to do uh, number one is my dad okay yeah my, my, my dad really walked with me we are friends with my dad mm. up to today we are friends and um, I also have another guy known as missionary Hezron Wachira who helped me to think outside the box and of course threw away the box so I thought outside the box and threw it away and uh, walked in the space <laughs> To, to, to get into my full discovery. And then I also read a, a lot about the rich Dr. Miles Monroe, one of the greatest life coaches this world has ever had. And uh, I read a lot of him, I followed him via Facebook and all that. And he was a great model to me. Okay. Yeah. I do know one uh, quote that Miles Monroe says is, one of the richest places on the earth is in the grave. Yes. Um, I don't know. I feel like, is that what, what you live by? Feeling like people don't, you can't die before exploiting everything that God gave you. Yes, you, you, nobody is supposed to die without exploiting what God really gave them. And uh, one of the things that you should do on a 24 hour basis, seven days a week, 365 days, and all the years you're going to live is um, 
now putting that quote in another version eh? it is bury your heart give out the deposits within you and bury your heart into the hearts of people and even when you're gone they will still be moving with what you taught them and that is also my concept i train a young person that even even if we don't meet for the next 10 years when we meet he, start, he shall still be walking in that space doing discovery day in day out wow. and that is what we mean by robbing the grave the, uh, the, the uh, robbing the grave the opportunity to kill us before we become all that we were born to become right, right. Mm -hmm. okay so you know with everything that you do I know that there are some challenges that you face. Yes. But of course, with the challenges, you still, you know, you've told me something important, and I know you will tell the rest. Mm. But what are some of the challenges that you face? Uh, challenges. Some of the challenges that I face is uh, at times you've got to to speak in uh, in seminars, and then you are in t-shirts. You see, why I do t-shirts is uh, is because I want to be I, I want to be next to my to the people I'm reaching out to. I want to simplify myself so that they may find me with ease. I, I want to use the Jesus pattern. Why I'm talking of the Jesus pattern? The Jesus pattern is this guy came to us. He was God, but he came to us. Right. He put on what we had. And so at times you go to, to seminars and these guys will say, ah, this is a young person. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, now, challenges come that we may be built. Challenges come that we may be strong. And the only way to face challenges is to cope. Cope with the challenges. See the negative thing. Ask yourself, why did I go through this? Some of the other challenges that you'll, you'll, you'll get is um, getting fake invitations. Mm -hmm. uh, like someone will... Uh, that happened when I was growing up in the life coaching. Someone will invite you, and then they are not there. And so you'll get into the crowd, phone off. Oh, no. So it happens. Oh, no. But then when you get there, get another opportunity to do something. Mm -hmm. survey, survey the ground. Mm -hmm. Research. Okay, do it's you painful. you get sad? Yes, you will. <laughs> you will, but, uh, but you must always realize why. Right. Because at one point, I went to, to Kajiado. And I had never been to Kajiado. Okay. So when I got into the ground, and I realized... This guy is not picking my phone. Then he went off. Oh no. Oh no. Mm. But then I, 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 I went into the hotel, slept, ate, and then within my discussions, because I'm so positive, I'm so positive when I'm speaking, even in hotels, I spoke to someone who, who gave me an opportunity to go speak in a certain project within Kajiando. Wow. And you had just met them there? Yes, I met them, I spoke to them, and this guy said, ah, we need that. Wow. So I was given an opportunity. So it is, it is in the coping with the challenges mm -hmm. that makes you great. Wow. Because the challenges are not on, only there to, to make you. They right. can destroy you if your perception is negative. It's so true. Yes. Very true. Right, so some of the challenges, or rather some of the topics and the themes that you deal with, you know, yeah. you talked about um, drug abuse. Yeah, drug you abuse. Talked about parenting, parenting. Mental, mentoring. Uh, yeah. um, what sexual else? health and purity. You do? Yes, sexual health and purity. Uh, because according to the ancient uh, researchers and uh, philosophers, one of them, Napoleon Hill, when he's speaking about sex transmutation, he says that the energy we use on sex if diverted, especially for teenagers, to do something constructive, then you can conquer your world and become the best. Wow. Now, someone who is married and they're doing sex with their loved ones, when they go out of the house, they conquer the world by doing whatever they do. If it's business, profession world, yes. Okay, yeah. that's very interesting. All right, the other topics that you deal with? The other topics will be on self-esteem, academic right. excellence, discipline. Uh, and on discipline, we do drills. 
we train people on discipline by their, those are drills huh. whereby they do them practically mm -hmm. so it's a tough it's, a, it's like a, a military form of a training mm -hmm. so in fact we engage services from the military people really yes and and uh, do you is it like a, a, a camp yeah we do camps we do camps we are also invited and given the full camps by other churches wow. we also do our own camps okay. we have also started doing dating dating weekends whereby guys come and they are trained on dating. What? Yes. Why? Why did you feel the need to do that? Because when you go to campuses, <laughs> whether people are born again or not, okay. you will realize that they are suffering from um, lack of understanding <laughs> how to fix the Mr. Right or the Miss Light, who is not there. Because there is nothing like Mr. and Miss Light. Okay. The aspect should be, if I can be able to cope with your nonsenses, <laughs> and you are able to cope with my <laughs> nonsenses, then we make a perfect match. Wow, okay, yes. alright. So you don't think that there's something called Mr. Right? Ah, there is nothing like that. There you, is you, no perfect person for you? Uh, there is no, uh, no perfect person for you. Mm. No, the perfect person for you happens in the making of what you want. Because the idea, like, the idea of a wife that I want is not the same idea of the wife that someone else want. wants. And so that idea that I have is I get the person that I can mold into that. Okay. I can place my perception, my thinking, my thoughts, and my heart into them. And they develop the same. And they do the same to me. Okay. So yes. you've, had, you've had dating camps? Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah, yes. Uh, especially how, how does that go? Do people come? Yes, they're coming. <laughs> they're coming in numbers. People want information. <laughs> oh my goodness. And not only information, <laughs> right. but people want content. Mm -hmm. Because people are suffering. Because there are people, there are people who are happy in marriage. The others who are not happy in marriage. Okay. The people who are complaining they are not married. The others who are complaining they are married. So how do we solve that for the future? Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Other topics you were talking about. The topics that you talk Other topics that we do is on uh, personal dream, dream development. Oh, and also about the um, dis um, discipline. Yes. The drills. Some of the drills that you do. Could you give us examples? Some of the drills that we do is uh, whereby we, 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 we come into a meeting, like a three days meeting. Okay. Then by, by six, you're supposed to have woken up, washed, and then you're supposed to be in a parade. Then within the parade, there are things that we tell people don't to do. Number one, don't chew. Don't drop a paper. And then intensive training. Whereby if you're given five minutes to eat, you use five minutes. Then we tell you what to do. And the time is squeezed so that you may get a discipline. Because discipline is squeezing yourself into a specific do, uh, way of doing things. Wow. Yes. yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I feel like discipline is one of the things if you manage to discipline yourself, you yourself, you've accomplished at least half of what you were meant to do in life. Yes. If you are a disciplined person. You know, when you were talking about someone who's disciplined and someone who's not disciplined, can you just tell us the disadvantages of someone who's not disciplined? In fact, uh, let me start from uh, this point. For me, the opposite of discipline is disaster. <laughs> not uh, in discipline. No, for me, it's disaster. disaster. If you're disciplined, there is a way nature will give you favor wow. okay. because disciplined people they work hard they sweat and you see sweat plus hard work is equals to success mm -hmm. if you are not disciplined then you get into disaster mm -hmm. you don't finish up your homework you don't finish up your assignments you mm -hmm. copy homework you're always rushing you always you become a photocopy or a duplicate. Oh no. And I want to speak to someone there. You're not a duplicate. You're not a photocopy. Right. You are an original. Yes. Yes, you are. Discipline brings you back to your originality. Mm -hmm. And you start walking your path. Mm -hmm. And you start following your convictions. Yes. So that is discipline. Wow. Yeah. Well, okay. So thank you so much, Mr. Talent, for coming. Uh, we are almost out of time. Yeah. Uh, but before we go, how can someone reach you? Now that they've had everything that you do and they want you to come and talk to someone or a group, how can they do that? Uh, there, there are two, two ways. Number one, you can get my number, which is 0742-198-985. Uh, if you can't 
call SMS. Uh, that is also in, on WhatsApp. Eh? Then you can also get to my Facebook uh, group account, which is I'm Unique Generation Africa. I'm Unique Generation Africa. Uh, that's the way to get us. Okay. Yeah. So before we go, any last words? Any Christmas wishes? Any shout outs? <laughs> <sighs> For Christmas, guys, as you celebrate your Christmas, do it soberly. Mm -hmm. Don't do it as, uh, as if the world is coming to an end. <laughs> know that in 2019, there are great things waiting for you. Exactly. And 2019 is next week, by the yes, way. Yes, next week. So I wish you guys a great Christmas and also a prosperous 2019. And uh, as you do that, think big. Even as you celebrate your Christmas, think big. Because the person you are celebrating was a big thinker. He was. And he made us to be where we are. Imagine. Thank you. All right, so thank you for coming. Thank you for the wise words. And thank you for showing us that it is possible to read a book every week. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm sure you've read more than 1,000 books. 100, uh, no, uh, over, over 1,500. Wow. Mm. Wow. How many books have you read? All right, so before we go, remember we have the Focus Journalism School. Intake is ongoing and there is a 30% discount for all the intakes that are going to be happening from now all the way till January 15th. Imagine 30% discount. Which other school can give you such a discount? All right, we have diploma and certificate courses. We have film production, journalism and mass communication, video editing, sound engineering, motion graphics, DJing, digital marketing, graphic design, computer packages if you want more information please call us on 0790-229938 0790-229938 okay so it's christmas eve i hope that whatever you're planning to do do it soberly as mr talent has said do it soberly remember 2019 is just next year so don't spend like it's the end of the world okay and think big like he has said right so my name is victoria tibet and this is the morning bright focus show thank you for joining me for motivation monday tomorrow is talent thursday but we'll be having a special segment where we'll be doing something special um sorry tomorrow is telltale tuesday but we'll be having a special segment where we'll be having special guests please don't miss out we'll be having an amazing set all right don't miss tomorrow's show see you tomorrow have a lovely day